Well, I thought the last video that I did was going to be the end of this project, but I got a couple questions. And uh, so I'll answer them. And also there was a thing that I needed to correct myself, which I did already. So now Judy can zoom in if she wants. All right, on the eyes. Well, first off, let's get rid of this question. I was asked about this staple which holds the feather in place, whether I was going to paint it. Well, no, I'm not going to paint it. I'm just going to leave it like it is. It's fine. If I went to try to paint it now, I know that I would probably goof it up. <laughs> so, so I'm just not going to do it. I'm finished with this figure. It's taken me, God, a month, I think. It seems like. Well, that's nice. My shade just fell down. But anyway, that's finished. But I did, I did take it over to the paint table, and I enlarged the uh, pupils on her eyes. Okay, to to do that, what I did because I'd already put my little finishing touch to the eyes on there, so I had to get rid of that. So very carefully, I went in and I s cut off the pupils that were there. Okay, so now I'm back to, well, not quite back. And then I painted new pupils on there. Iris, I guess that's what they're called, the iris of the eye. But anyway, I made them bigger. I didn't care for it. There was something about this piece which I just did not like. I did not like the head at all. Still don't, you know, I'm not doing backflips over it. But anyway, the, making those uh, people, the irises, whatever you call them, larger, improved that head at 100%. And uh, I think if you go back, well, once I make a blog post, I'm gonna put a, try to put a picture on there the before and after, the difference that it can make in a piece. Okay, now for the last step for the eyes. Years ago I used to carve a lot of songbirds and uh, making the eyes on a songbird, you know, I bought some glass eyes and it just became such a tedious process because <laughs> my shade keeps falling down. Give me a minute to get rid of this problem. I'll be right back. Judy and I, the other day, to improve the quality of the videos, to cut down the light that comes in from the window, I went out and I had this old uh, rattan plastic shade that we used up on the front porch that uh, wasn't that service serviceable anymore. So I brought it, cut it down to size to fit this big picture window, and hooked it up to where I could raise and lower it. And to cut it down completely, we put this piece of uh, black cloth over it. Well, we just taped it on there. Well, today's a very hot day, and the tape came, <laughs> duct tape strong, but it evidently couldn't handle the heat. So that's what happened. It fell, fell down. So we're going to have to do this a little better. But anyway, what that does is it gives, it cuts that light down coming in this way, and allows more light to come in from the front, which makes for a better video. So anyway, getting back to my uh, songbirds. So I came up, just goofing around down here one day, I came up with uh, the idea, well, what if I put some epoxy on the painted eye? I wonder if that will work. So I took a toothpick, and I had one here, here it is stuck to me, it just shows you how hot it is in here. And I mixed me up some clear epoxy, and very carefully I put that epoxy just just touched it on the eye of my little birds and bingo I had glass eyes it was amazing because one thing I don't like when people do their carvings they don't take into consideration how small they are like this is a very small f human being compared to my size or Judy's size so when things are reduced like that, all the detail is also gets smaller and smaller and smaller depending on the size of the thing that you're doing. So you're not going to see 
the black hole in the iris or the color around it that much at all. And carvers, for some strange reason, they make their eyes look like dolls. Now that's, that's their uh, choice. I don't care what they make them, but I, it's just never been that appealing to me. But by doing it this way, I'll show you the result of it. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to squeeze me out just a little bit of epoxy. This is the five minute epoxy. And believe me, it don't take much at all to do this. And you just mix it together. And this epoxy is very forgiving. So if you get your mixture off a little bit, it's not going to matter. Okay, I want to take my toothpick and I want to get the I want to get the smallest point on the toothpick. Usually a toothpick will have a big end, you know, a larger end on one end than it does on the other. These have about the same, so I guess I'll just use that end that I was messing with, okay? So, I'm going to take my toothpick. I'm going to dip it in here and just get the tiniest bit of epoxy on the end of it. And I'm going to touch it right to the eye. Now you watch what happens. What's the first thing you see? You see that white highlight. And it's round, just like your eye. It's not a stationary white spot. See it move? <laughs> Judy's hands moving. It just gives a life sparkle to these eyes. You try real hard not to touch the upper lid or the lower lid. That's the secret. Let me put on just a little bit more there. There. Now look at those eyes. Look at the difference. It's absolutely amazing. Now watch, watch, watch that white spot move. Amazing. It's amazing. And that's what's happened. That's the same effect that happens when we move. Because that little white spot is dependent upon any light that uh, hits it. Okay, and, then, and because it's so uh, shiny, it really looks, just looks fantastic. It brings your carving alive. Here, I have another one back here. Yeah, it's the same thing. Instead of being dead with a phony white spot, these eyes are alive with a white spot that follows the light. Okay? So, now that figure looks 100% better than it did before because I enlarged the irises. And I'm sure I'll be corrected if I said the wrong word other than just a spot, a little black spot that basically was on there before. So now, it's okay. This carving turned out pretty good, I think. So anyway, that completes this project. Uh, I think I've got another project lined up. I've been thinking about it, and we'll do that here in the future. Okay? So until then, I'll talk to you later, and I hope you, hope you really enjoy this project.